If you're watching this on release date, I am leaking this information to you one week early. As an avid Canva user, I've noticed two incredible updates that have just made their way into my Canva in the last two days, and I want to share them with you. So you are ahead of the curve and you're able to use these features now rather than having to wait till they get officially released next week at the Canva Create yearly event. Now, if you're watching this video after the fact, please know that after that event, I will be releasing a full video outlining all of the different things that are happening. So if you're watching beforehand, make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss out on that big update video. I like to really go in on what is going to happen and what actually really matters for us as small business owners, what features, what updates are going to be actually useful for you rather than just ones that sound cool. And if you're watching this after the fact, make sure you check out that video from me because that will go into these features and more that will be released next week at Canva Create. Okay. Let's work through these two incredible changes. As a graphic designer, I probably count these as slightly more incredible than an everyday person would, but trust me, these will be useful to have when you need them. So first up is one that is going to help you with your text. If you are using half numbers or squared numbers, I want to do like what's called superscript or subscript, where there's a little letter or number at the top or a little number on, letter or number down the bottom. This is going to be a game changer for you. In the past, if we wanted to have like, say, I want to do pancake squared, in the past, I would have needed to add in a whole new text box add in this little two, but now Canva has a easy, 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 easy way to do this. So I'm going to add the number two here. I'm going to highlight the number two, then go up to my text box panel kind of at the top here. And you'll see this new one called advanced formatting. This baby is fresh off the press. If I click on advanced formatting, you'll see a few things here, but under general, we'll have text position. So we can either have none where it's just plain text as is, or we can have superscript or subscript. Click on this. And you'll see that my little number two goes into superscript mode. So, so wildly useful. If I want to do it down the bottom, I could click this. Or if I wanted to return it back to normal, I would click the two normal. Now, noticing too, if I hover over this, you'll see the shortcut for this. So I can just press command full stop and it'll make it higher. Or I can press command comma and it will make it lower. So that's a little fun hack for you. So you might want to do this for if you're doing squared or even inside a recipe, for example, you wanted a half. I can highlight the one and make it go up high. And I can highlight the two and make it go down low and have my half looking really great rather than trying to work out some sort of roundabout way of doing this. So that is a really, really helpful text option that is now available to us. The next text update for you, that's part two of what I want to share with you in the text-based update. This is one that you're not going to notice until you need it. But if I click on this advanced formatting button again, you'll see the typography toggle. If I toggle across over here, you'll see some, some toggles for kerning and ligatures. I'm not going to talk about the ligatures one yet because I haven't found this to be super useful yet, but when I do, I will be sure to let you know. The kerning one can be really helpful. You'll notice if I click on this text box here with the word business in it and I toggle on kerning, just notice how it changes a little bit. So you'll see here that it's actually just fixing up the spacing between the particular letters that I'm using on this font. Sometimes you'll use this and it'll make no difference at all. That's because the font and the word that you're using just already looks great. But it looks, it's looking like it's going through and just looking at the text and the words that you've used and the font that you've used and seeing if it actually needs a bit of fixing up. This can be if a font wasn't designed perfectly or that the word that you're using just wasn't made well within that font. So if I just click on this kerning, you'll see that it actually just fixes up the spacing, particularly between the N and the E and the B and the U. So it feels more uniform form across the whole word. So I'm going to click it again. It just gets a little bit tighter. This is really useful, particularly if you're working on something really important, like a logo design. Like usually when my clients are making logo designs with fancy fonts, we have to go through and like put the B in a separate text box and move it closer to the isness before it actually looks right. Whereas this is a real game changer. So if you're making logos or particular headings or like a t-shirt design or something that you want the font and the text to be absolutely perfect, then this feature is going to be so, so useful. So again, you just click on the text box that's needed or the word that it's needed. You can highlight a particular word, go to advanced formatting and toggle over to typography and turn on the kerning option. You've also got ligatures here, but again, I haven't found that to be super useful just yet. The second update that you are going to absolutely love, and I literally saw someone complaining about this recently, and it's now here, is the ability to edit particular parts of your image in the edit feature. So if I click on my photo here and I go to the edit option, there's a really great adjust feature inside Canva. This has been quite just your, your standard kind of adjust the temperature, adjust the brightness and the contrast, just standard photo adjustments. This has been really helpful, but I can't edit particular parts of this image. So say, for example, I wanted my background to be a, like black and white, or I wanted the, the foreground to be a lot brighter than the background. If I wanted to do that in the past, I would have had to use like the background mover and do lots of different layers and get really quite fancy with how I did it. But now I can do it very easily all within this section. So if I click on my image and scroll up, you'll see this select area. So right now it's all is selected. That means that if I make any of these edits to my design, it's just editing the whole image. 
However, if I was to click on this click button, I can actually select the part of the image that I want to edit. This image really only has one main focal point, so it's just giving me this option. But if there was multiple ones, I could click on a different area and it would choose a different part of this design for me to edit. But for now, I'm just going to click. So you can see it's picked up the background. I'm just going to click the foreground here with me. I'm now going to unselect the background. So it's just the picture of the foreground. And you'll see if I edit, say, for example, I edit the brightness here, it's going to make me super bright, but the background stays normal. So if I go to the vibrance here, I could make me super bright, but the background stays normal. Or I could even make myself black and white. You know, that could be a fun, that this feature, was, this effect was super in like years ago. Not so much now, but look, it's an option there if you want it. If I want to make this super sharp or I want to make it super kind of blurry. I can do all of that just within this feature. Similarly, I can just, I can also select the foreground or the background. So if I select the background, it's going to select the background for me and I can just change that background without having to edit the foreground. Similarly, I can do the foreground. So me as a subject matter, I can edit that just by clicking that option there. So that is going to be a game changer when you want to edit a specific part of an image, but not the whole thing. All right, those are the two updates I wanted to briefly share with you before the big range of updates that Canva is going to share with us next week. So make sure you stay tuned for that full updates video. In the meantime, I hope you love these features. Let me know in the comments which one you're most excited for, those advanced formatting text features or the specific adjustment features where you can choose which part of your image you are adjusting. Enjoy these and I'll see you next week for another video. Bye.